So I, I'm not sure how much everyone's interested in, in, in this, but we felt that it's, it's uh, an interesting, relevant to this, this audience uh, sort of, sort of uh, topic to d discuss. So the, we're going to talk about SOSA. Is, uh, is there some familiarity with, with SOSA in the audience? Do, is there a couple hands coming up? Okay, so so a little familiarity. So, if you're familiar with the DoD systems that have been fielded over the last several decades, basically what's happened is is the sorry, I'm okay. I like walking around. Um, so, basically, what what traditionally happens with the with the DOD, whether we're talking about the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, is essentially there's a need for a system, let's call it a sensor system, whether it's image capture or uh, tactical comms or some electronic uh, warfare type system and such. What basically normally happens is, is uh, that, that program team comes up with a specification on what they, they need to field, and they come up with a requirement spec, and they put that out to bid, and typically uh, companies go against that, that requirement spec, they come up with a proposal, and they put together a system and, and submit that, and someone wins. What what you end up with in that case is what we call a, a stovepipe solution. Stovepipe solution meaning one vendor creates a box that solves your solution. That box is, is very fixed. It's, it's got the vendor's hardware. It's got the vendor's software. It, 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 it solves your problem, but it solves just your problem. It doesn't, it's not, easily, uh, it's not necessarily easily serviceable, it's not upgradable in many cases. Uh, when, when it is upgradable, when you're allowed to do technology insertions, that can only be done through that vendor, so you have to go back to them for hardware, you have to go back to them for software. So basically what, what the DOD decided to do is go to really a an open standard model, both hardware, software, really at the module uh, um, interface uh, 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 point. So, so what you have here is all the branches now of, of the DOD. So we've got Army, Navy, Air Force, those really drove it. Now you've got every, everyone in there. You've got Space Force, you've got uh, all sorts of government entities that are participating. You've got that combined with industry, so there's a lot of industry, all of the typical primes, a lot of uh, small businesses, medium-sized businesses and such are all participating in a consortium to, to create a, a, a spec that everyone can uh, design to. So it, what it is is an architecture. It's a technical architecture, and that defines essentially all of the interfaces, whether they're software interfaces or, or hardware interfaces. It doesn't define your implementation. So everyone is allowed to create a module that performs, that performs a function and is implemented with their own technique, and so people can differentiate themselves. The solutions can be differentiated, but at an interface level, they're all essentially compatible. And that gives you a lot of flexibility uh, where, where you can now uh, deploy a system that is field serviceable, field upgradable, that a, a system now is not necessarily a single vendor. Every part of that system could potentially be a different vendor. 
And that can be, as I said, both hardware and, and, and software. The SOSA consortium has over 100 member companies now. So it, we literally meet on a weekly basis in, in uh, working groups. We get together uh, every other month, actually, for face-to-face -face, uh, meetings and, and uh, work, oops, went the wrong way, work through the, uh, the implementation uh, pieces of the, the architecture. So if you were to look at how it's architected, there, I'm showing a, a couple of different pictures here. If you look at the one on, I guess it would be the top right, that gives you sort of a decomposition of the modules. You see a sensor system made up of a, a chassis management piece, and then underneath it, you've got all of the, the let's say, the, the, the data uh, handling modules. And, and you'll see descriptions of that. And then underneath that, you, you have um, the support system modules, things like timing and, and such, like PNT cards and things like that. If you look at the, the, the lower picture here, it's more of a taxonomy model. And we're going to talk about really the, the hardware piece of that. Epic Solutions is a an SDR vendor, as you, as you know, so we're, we're very focused on, on this hardware element with a little bit of, of software in there as, as well. If you look at form factors, what SOSA standardized on is, well, first of all, SOSA, the, the intent there is try to use existing standards as much as possible, so they leverage a, a, a lot of existing standards, one being VITA. So they go to VITA a lot. There's a lot of cross-pollination between, between SOSA and, and, and VITA. And if you look at a, a SOSA sensor, what normally you would see is, is a VPX card. If, you, uh, if you're familiar with VPX cards, typically they come in a couple of different sizes a 3U VPX and a 6U VPX. This is a, a 3U VPX size, and we, we have this actually out there in our booth if you want to look at it uh, a bit more. 3U VPX is very common. Most of the SOSA activity that you see now are, are leveraging 3U VPX form factor. There is also a 6U VPX, not as common, but it's, it's also widely deployed. It's approximately twice, twice as big, a, a little bit over twice as big. There's also within SOSA right now, a lot of effort on getting into a smaller size. There's a, a piece of the technical architecture right now that defines something called 3U short or short VPX. It's essentially a 3U VPX folded in on itself. So it's the same width little shorter, uses the exact same I.O. connector, so everything's defined, very easy to, to add that into the standard because the interface is the same, the, the card width is the same, the, 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 the pitch or the thickness of the card is, is a little bit wider, giving you a little uh, opportunity to essentially fold your, your design over on itself. And then sort of the newer standard that is getting rolled into, into the SOSA technical architecture is VNX. Some people may be familiar with VNX. There was a, a VITA standard or is a VITA standard called VITA 74 that defines VNX. We're actually working on an updated VITA standard called VITA 90, and that's what we're, we're calling VNX Plus. And that will address, as, as you can see in the picture, a, a smaller form factor. If you look at what a SOSA chassis is, what's interesting is within the architecture, SOSA chassis are not standardized. You can essentially do whatever you want with the SOSA chassis. So that means you can make 
a one slot chassis, you can make a two slot chassis, you can make a 14 slot chassis. Essentially, if you have an idea of what sort of technology parameters your end solution needs, you can essentially say, okay, I envision that I could use from, let's say, one to three SDRs. I need a, a timing card, like a PNT card. I'll need a power supply or two power supplies. I'll need an SBC. Maybe I'll need a GPU. And, and you can basically build a, a chassis that can accommodate that. And how it accommodates that is there's, there's these slot profiles. And the slot profile is based on the basic functionality of, of, of the card. So there's, there's payload cards that a payload card can be actually an SBC. It can be an RF card. So an SDR is typically an RF payload card. It, it can be a variety of, of different things. There's, there's switch cards. There's timing cards, there's, there's, a, there's actually an I.O. card and such. So you can uh, uh, build a chassis with, a, with uh, some configuration of cards. And because the interfaces, that the, the, the profile which defines this, this edge connector is all standard, in theory, you have the, the right profile card, you can plug that into that slot. If you want to switch that card, if you want to perhaps uh, service it and put in a new card, you can put in a, you can pull the card, you can put in a different card from perhaps a different vendor. That vendor could have maybe a different implementation that gives you some advantage and, and you do a tech technology insertion that way. So it's easily upgradable. It's field upgradable. So one thing that SOSA is very keen on is essentially all of your I.O. is off the back. You don't have front connectors. So when you're in the Arctic and you're servicing your, your, your chassis with gloves on and you're swapping cards, you're not sitting there screwing in SMAs and such. You're, you're, you're pulling the card, you're putting in a new card, and you're done. And, and so that, that's a key aspect of it. So let's see, moving on. This is an ex these are a couple of examples of, of profiles. So this is the, the larger one here, is a typical SDR RF payload profile. So you can see here all of the, what's called the wafers, all of the electrical connections are, are predefined. At the top there, you have your power connections. Underneath that, you have your data connect connections. Data plane, for example, is, is uh, a lar larger conduit of ethernet data. SOSA in general is very ethernet centric. So most interfacing is done through ethernet. There's real time and there's non real time. So you've got, in, in this case, the, the fat pipe, which uh, is, is a wider uh, Ethernet um, port, essentially, that can support, for example, 100 gig Ethernet. That, that's a real time in, uh, Ethernet. The ultra thin pipe is actually a non real time Ethernet. And then you've got some clock and some, some general purpose inter interconnect. You have a control plane, which is actually a non real time Ethernet. And then you have an expansion plane. The expansion plane is more definable. So it could potentially be Ethernet. It could also be PCIe, for example, if you want to connect directly to a GPU. Underneath that, you have what's called an aperture. In this case, in this particular uh, profile, the aperture is, is what they call a full aperture. So you have a reasonable amount of, of room there for RF interconnects. So if you look at this card, this has the full aperture, and this has up to 14 SMPMs for RF in interconnect. If you look at the alternative here, 
on the, the bottom right. This is another RF profile that could potentially be used for an, for an SDR card. This has a half aperture, so it gives you more of the digital interconnect and less of the RF in, interconnect in that particular profile. If you look at that table on the, the bottom left, that gives you options on that, the aperture where you can, you can have apertures with, with just coax, you can have apertures with fiber, apertures with fiber and coax, a, a hybrid aperture. So there's, there's a lot of options there. Once you define that profile, then you've committed to that profile and anything that's compatible with that can be essentially plugged into that slot. So once you plug into that slot, what happens? So with an RF payload, there's this standard called MORA, the Modular Open RF Architecture. So MORA is essentially defining that software interface, the sort of ICD. It's also defining the, the hard interface. So, so we've got two Ethernet buses coming out of, of MORA. One is a victory data bus. That's a lower speed one. One's a much higher uh, speed, more low latency bus, which is where your, your data gets transferred. Data is Vita 49 based with the more overhead. Uh, going on, we, we do have a solution, Epic, Solu Epic Solutions, called the VPX400, which is a digitization card. It's an SDR, essentially. Handles up to an 800 meg uh, IBW and, and uh, it supports up to four receives, four transmits at 200 meg per channel. Um, this is that larger payload that I was, I was showing you. An implementation would be something like this, where you would have a, a chassis at, at the bottom of the vehicle here that has all of your cards. Your cards can, can hold, for example, a, an EW application. It can hold a general purpose SDR. It can hold a tactical comm card. What, whatever you choose, essentially, can be stuffed into that chassis. There's standard buses that run through the vehicle, whether the, it's a vehicle or a ship, or it could be a backpack even. And then that can connect to, for example, a radio head which a radio head is essentially an antenna with, with some electronics on it. Uh, going on, there is a conformance piece of this. So right now, you see a lot of cards that say SOS aligned. SOS aligned essentially means that you've designed the card with the SOSA technical standard in, in mind, and you think that you will comply with it, but until you go through this sort of lengthy process, you, you cannot call it a conformant card. A conformant card means you've gone to a certification authority, a verification authority you, that has used the uh, conformance suite and has verified your card against that. They've issued a report that report's gone through the certification authority. They've reviewed that, they agree to it, and then they basically give you the stamp of approval to, to label it a conformant card, and it's conformant to a specific SOSA standard that it was tested to, and then that goes into a registry so it can be, it can be referenced by everyone. For the VPX 400, for example, we did do some, we started the compliance test. The compliance test actually for anything right now is not in place yet. So no one can actually comply a card today, but it will be in place starting the end of the year for power supplies and in next year for, for other cards. But we did start this process. We went to Aberdeen Proving Grounds, and this is a, a picture of that where we ran a compliance uh, suite against our, our system and are showing that. 
and I think I've hit my limit. So we are hiring, and I will be here rest of today if you have any questions, if I can answer anything regarding this. Thank you.